Uh, no, I'm good. Just so you know, uh, I'm here. I'm, I'll be back on here another time soon. Uh, if, if you find me on Facebook, chances are you'll probably stalk me. Listen to Unheard of. All right, everybody, welcome back to another great week here at Unheard Of. On the left side of your screen, or maybe the left side of your ears, if you're just listening to this episode, you'll see my co-host, companion, best friend, ABG. How are you doing, man? I'm pretty good, man. Uh, what about you? I uh, can't complain. Can't complain. We got a lot of snow ourselves out here in old Colorado. and uh, But uh, we can we can deal with it better than most states, and we can get into that later but uh you know did you have a good week uh yeah man uh, just working and then getting ready to start this new job next week and you know definitely i had to go get my car fixed today mm-hmm. and it was it was acting up on me but she's back we good Old you, you just been uh enjoying the snow this week uh, sure, yeah. It's always fun to get up at like 4 a.m. and shovel snow, you know, to make sure you make it to work. Um, but yeah. So, on the bottom of your screens, or in another side of your, you know, your face, one of the ears, you will, uh, either see or hear our good buddy, uh, listener of the show, Christian Rocha. How are you doing, man? No, I'm doing good. Uh, just messing with some filters right now, but I'm pretty good for the most part. I like it. We've got Christmas lights and the Northern lights on yours, so you you yeah. all light it up, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hunter was pretty wild last week with all his uh changing backgrounds. Maybe. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe you'll get something stable soon. Um, so tell us how your week was, man. I understand you're a law student now. <laughs> Well, man, I, I I do this the same exact thing. I don't have these funny little footage, but I sit in front of a computer with a webcam on in a virtual class with like 40 plus other people. And, you know, uh, it's very tough. Uh, I had to, uh, I, like, just one class alone, I had to read at least probably like probably about 40 plus pages. Sheesh. Yeah. It's, but, um, I mean,. You're you're in, a, you're in a Zoom with us, dude. I mean, we're not we're not your peers in law school, but this, you oh, should be used to this. You should be used to being on the cameras now. Oh, oh yeah, no, no doubt. It's just it's just so much, and then there's always that, that fear of like getting like. I mean, they don't they don't do it often, but there's that fear of like getting cold called. If, y'all know what that is? Yeah, <laughs> I know what cold calling is. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, like, as soon as you, if you don't know nothing, and then you get code call, you're like, oh, God, you got to look like an idiot in front of everybody. Hey, man, I mean, that could happen in a regular classroom, too, so it doesn't no, sound like anything it's, changed it's, to me. It, there's it's something it's something about law school that just, it just, it just, it's just worse. Hey, yeah. man, you want to you give a shout-out to your school? How much longer you got? Uh, Vermont Law School, and, uh, uh, Actually, I don't know, man, because I'm in a master's right now, but mm. uh, if I just stick with the master's at the end of the summer, but if I if I, if I I decided to go do the full JD program, then another two and a half years. Woo! Yeah, of course you could make a ton of money and you'd uh, ensure that, you know, your chances of becoming a judge later on in the future would be higher. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. You know, I don't know what I want to do because there's there's so much, but I don't know if I want to be just a lawyer. There's there's a whole bunch of legal professions out there, uh, and you know I, I do restorative justice. That's that's my that's my program. It's it's a little bit more on the think of like law. If law, if you if there's like a conflict resolution version of law, you yeah, kind of kind of like is it is it just like with like legal disputes, is it like criminal? Well, uh, let's put it this way: if let's say some, you know, you know, while it's while a lot of it does have you know have its roots in like you know trying to to quote unquote restore people, with, you know, 
uh, reform relationships and whatnot. And okay. sometimes you know, that may it may have its ties in like you know trying to uh, trying to fix racial tension and divides. You know, oftentimes it's you know it's it involves like these unique you know uh, processes like you know like uh, uh, they call them like circles. So like you know um, so instead of sending somebody to like you know for fifteen years of prison for uh, domestic battery, yeah, you know you'll try you'll try to come to like a, a you know you know where like both sides will try to come to agreement where they they're gonna come together, they talk to each other. Uh, they, you know, you know, and, I, and, it, and it's not like a, you know, it's not like someone who's just, you know, trying to say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There's got to be some genuine um, uh, remorse. There's got to be this desire to want to, you know, to actually, you know, to uh, to redeem yourself. And that may come in many forms, you know, compensation, monetary compensation, uh, doing, you know, a specific type of work. Um but ultimately, you know, coming, you know, together and, you know, like, I don't, you know, come together and say, I don't want to be part of this, uh, this broken system. I got you. Yeah, I, I, got think, you. I, think, I think we can all agree that the justice system right now isn't exactly superb. I mean, oh, sure, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. I mean, sure, fair enough. You know, most, a lot of other parts of the world is pretty bad off. But, but you know, when I look, I think of like, you know, like, like Switzerland. Like many of the sweet the the uh, the uh, northern European countries, you know, they they have a very you know often they have a very robust you know uh, penal system, uh, justice reform system. You know, yeah. even, you know a lot of, you know a lot of prisons over there don't even look like prisons; they look like college dorms. And you know, you would think, okay, well, what is uh, what is their uh, recidivism rate? Recidivism being like you know uh, how you know uh, the rate at which someone uh, reoffends. Yeah. How often you know, or how often a, pop, a, a sample of a population reoffends? It's actually significantly low. Because yeah, because people, seeing... people, uh, I feel like people in other countries they they more or less try to they they actually try to reform cr uh, criminal behavior instead of in the United States, uh, police officers and yeah. the justice system just like throwing people in jail, keeping people in jail for like for numbers or for like, you know, how it was privatized, like for money, you know what I'm saying? People yeah, profit, I'm profiting off of, uh, you know, some people just making mistakes. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I, I know, I, I think that private prisons are without a doubt a travesty. Yeah. There, should, there should never be a there should not be any type of private prisons that you know that might bank off of you know convicted felons. Yeah, which, off the, you know, off the back of people. Yeah, I mean, plus I think we could. I think you know it's a whole other topic if we start talking about like. Yeah, I was saying. Yeah, we're we're getting it. We're getting to a new topic, but um, yeah. this is this is this is Christian. Everybody, uh, I'm, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. We got something. We, I mean, we got we got a show. We got a show lined up for you guys. I hope you guys enjoy it, and uh, I'm going to give it over to Jared so he can lead us into our first topic. All right. Well, as uh, many of our listeners know, because most of you live in Georgia, um, Texas got a bunch of snow over the past week, and uh, as many states in the south, you know, they're not equipped to handle that type of thing. Of course, I've lived in places like Virginia and Colorado. Um, Arthur's traveled a good bit to states that get a lot of snow, so... You know, there's a bunch of states that can that can and are prepared for that type of thing, but uh, you know, Texas isn't. And as the saying goes, everything's bigger in Texas. Um, so the disaster has been extremely huge. Um, I think the death rate is up to over 50 people by now, um, just from car accidents, people dying from freezing in their cars, not knowing how to just like you know find heat, yeah. uh, powers going out in homes. I think it's it's uh, it's insane what's going on down there. It it's it's crazy, man. Like, cause, I mean, of course, Texas is a state where like, they pretty much kind of like Georgia. Like, if they get snow, it's nothing really to look at. You know what I'm saying? If it if it even sticks, and I mean, 
stuff may sh- like people like businesses businesses may shut down for like a day or so because the roads are icy, but usually uh, the it warms it warms back up, all the snow's gone. But this time they got that snow and everything shut down, man. It's crazy. And like you said about um, people freezing to death, I read I read about uh, I think he was. I mean, he really wasn't that old. Maybe like a sixty-year-old man, freezing to death in, in like his recliner at home. Yeah, yeah. Um, I seen uh, Christian actually raised his hand on the platform. I think he wanted to hop in. Oh, oh yeah. did he? Oh, sorry, I didn't <laughs> even see that. <laughs> no, I was going to give a shout out. I mean, which I, I doubt they ever see, but you know, there's a uh, there's a, a there's a person of mine, or not another person, but there's a, a fellow uh, classmate of mine. It's in Texas right now. They're they're having to deal, <laughs> they're having to deal with that. And and I mean, even speaking of Texas, you know, Christian told us before the show that he's got a personal connection to Texas right now. Uh, that can make anyone bad. in the current environment kind of sad. That's true. What's going on? What's what's going on with you in Texas right now, uh, Christian? Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, my PS Five, which I ordered. Roughly about two and a half weeks ago, it's stuck in Texas. Uh, apparently, it's made some progress. But now it's no longer Fort Worth; it's now in Arlington. Oh, ah, okay, so it's moving. How long was it stuck in Fort Worth? Uh, it, it got to Fort Worth like last Saturday. Last and it, wow! It, it literally just moved today. <laughs> Dang, that's almost a that's six days in Fort know, Worth, you Texas. Know, you know what makes me? You know what really makes me like very. Like, I guess I'm scared about that. It's because yeah. who's delivering it? Yeah, it's FedEx. <laughs> it's FedEx. And I, I don't know if you know anything about the. I don't know if you know anything, but there's like, like since the PS5 came out, the Xbox Series Two, there's like, a, there's been like a host of like drivers, both UPS, but you know, in FedEx, it's just like they were still that they will they will scan them, they'll scan out the PS5. Yeah, and it was taken with them. I um, I had a guy at work who bought a PS5 um, straight from Sony when they had one of the sales, and um, he actually took a day off work to make sure that he was there when it arrived because um, it said on like the internet disclaimer that it wasn't coming in like a box. It was coming straight in the PS5 box that would like be left oh. on the doorstep. Holy crap! So. What? He took the whole day off to make sure he was there when it came. <laughs> bro, if if they bro, because like when I get packages delivered to my house, um, they I mean if I'm not there, they just leave it there. So like if like right in front of my door too. So if like somebody was walking by, and they saw a PS5 box, like it would be gone. Somebody would yeah. literally just come up on my porch and steal my PS5. That's crazy. Uh-huh. If, if 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 my if my PlayStation Five, or at least if, if the supposed delivery gets here, and all I find is it, is all if, if all I find is like an empty box or like a, a bag of cat food or something like that, <laughs> I, I, honestly, I'm probably just going to walk out in the, from the first vehicle I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After waiting like, like like three three plus weeks, and then yeah. find out you don't have your PS Five, there's there's no point. There's um, no point. There's no I'm, point. Like, Nah. I'll, I'll play while I get up there. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even hurting. Like, uh, I could wait another year to get a PS5. Like, I'm, not, I'm in yeah. no hurry. Now, I'm that being said, I can wait like a six months. Now, that being said, I ordered mine from, from GameStop. I'll, but that being said, if there was no PlayStation being like, available to sell, except for what scalpers are offering, I still wouldn't buy. I don't, care, I don't care if I have to wait three or four years. I would never buy one from a scalper. Yeah, I'm, I mean, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going to fall into that peer pressure. That's true. They, they, they will. They will. They will sell long before I buy from them. Yeah. Um. I know we we got off, but I think it's crazy how like Texas is uh, mm-hmm. having this insane emergency right now. Just because when the snow kind of hit them, people were traveling, and I know I saw a video that was out of Fort Worth, Texas, where they just had this huge pileup on the interstate, like, 
semis and cars just kept running into each other and uh I'm like Jesus Christ I mean I I would think that a state like Texas that at least has a day's notice you know that all that snow is coming uh I would have gone ahead and shut everything down if I was the governor but they are they're hit hard I mean the you know former presidential nominee Ted Cruz their senator is just like fleeing the state running to Mexico He's like, nah, his, his wife sent out the text, honey, it's too cold, let's take a trip. They were in Cancun like 12 hours later. Bro, no, he was just going to drop the kids off, bro. He was on his way right oh, back bro. to fight for the, for, for the good people of Texas, bro. He is not going to be able to run for president again because uh, that report is going to kill him in his own state because uh, apparently – he actually got the help of a uh, Houston police to coordinate his travel to the airport so they could fly out to Mexico. Man, I mean, I mean, even if let's say hypothetically, even if he could run for president again, which he, I mean, which honestly at this point it, it, he probably couldn't because I don't, who's really going to support him? But you, you also got to realize that you know that with this current you know political climate, you know, the you know you know with how a lot of the different, you know, factions of the Republican Party are at the moment, you know, honestly, the Republican Party might split a little bit, you know, in the next few years. They, you also, because especially, you know, now there's there's been so many Republicans who have been looking towards the Libertarian Party, to join the Libertarian Party, because they're like, okay, the Republican Party isn't doing it, uh, isn't doing exactly what I thought they would. You know, yeah. I mean, that's the thing for Democrats, but probably the Republicans are probably more so right now. Even if Republicans, even if just a couple of them shifted to, like, say, Libertarians, uh, Libertarians still wouldn't have enough support in Congress. Like, come the next election, yeah. more Republicans and Democrats would just get elected anyways. So, uh, that's a that's an uphill battle that's being that's been fought and continues to be fought for uh, years. But, I mean, technically, I think he could run again for president, but his reputation is. It's getting pretty shoddy. I mean, uh, I mean, hey, yeah. give it, give it eight more years. I mean, he'll, people will forget. He'll, he'll try to run again. I mean, I think Texas nearly flipped blue themselves, uh, in the past, in the last uh, election. So they did. They did almost yeah. flip blue. So I mean, I wouldn't even like I said. I'm, his chances are pretty slim to none. Like at least for the next election, because Texas is getting close to being blue too. Hey, Amen. Crazy. Yeah. And you know but, what? Speaking um, of uh, mortality and people dying, uh, everybody saw the new uh, Mortal Kombat trailer, right? Oh, yeah. Mortality and people dying. Um, <laughs> uh, it, was, it was really good. Uh, I that really was, enjoyed it. That was kind of a morbid transition. Obviously, uh, I'm, not, I'm not downing anybody that's been killed or has died from the Texas tragedy. It was just... Uh, it was just a fun segue, so don't cancel me, PC culture, okay? I was like, just I was, making light. I was literally just about to say, uh, <laughs> uh, every, uh, we just want everybody in Texas to know that uh, from the whole unheard of team, our hearts are with y'all. And then you literally just be like, uh, speaking of people dying, yeah. Well, <laughs> speaking of people being down bad. I do care about them, but... Uh, you know, the Segway game's got to stay strong. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, and I'm messing this up. What are, you, what are you holding up, bro? Oh, Monopoly for millennials. You know, technically, you're a Gen Z Christian. No, 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 no I'm not. Because, uh, no, because 95 is usually where it's stopping point. So I'm putting it in. I, uh... Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I thought you was born in 96. No, I'm 95. But even then, you know, I, I was still... I still was old enough. I remember, you know, we in our house we used to have a uh, an old black and white. I don't know why we had a black and white TV. It's stupid, but we had one living room. Hey. Uh, I mean, anyways, uh, Arthur, but, um, Mortal I was, Kombat. I was, oh well. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> just talk about whatever because I don't know how it got changed. Christian just started holding up Monopoly. That's true. Um, Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I, 
everybody watched the trailer, or I mean, we all watched the trailer. Um, I, I mean, I thought it was, I mean, I thought it looked good, but bad at the same time. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm bracing for it to be bad, but I'm excited for it to be good at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, from, yeah. from literally just watching the trailer before recording this. Uh, it looks like the story might be, uh, you know, 50-50, but, uh, the action in that Red Band trailer looks like it's gonna be up to par when it comes to, uh, oh, yeah. you know, those gaming level scenes, man. I mean, it looks, it looks legit. Like, the fight scenes the are gonna be pretty awesome. Yeah, the fight and the action look really good. Uh, a couple characters I, I was excited to see. I was excited to see Jax. I was excited to see Melina. And Scorpion, like um, like those are the characters. Like I'm just, I'm very excited for. Yeah, I mean, are you a big uh, Mortal Kombat fan, Christian? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't watch the whole trailer like like we did, but yeah. My only, my only issue is, is that you know, is that um, I, I think I saw uh, what's his name uh. I, I feel like there was something. It was kind of something off of the graphics when I saw when I saw um, uh, Jax. I think it yeah. was, I think it was yeah. Jax. I saw. It. I don't know for some reason. There's just for some reason there was something off of the graphics. And the oh same, yeah, he got his arms blown off. Yeah, but I mean not that. But there's also the same thing with uh with the the light the the uh when they when I can't remember who it was that was shooting that was shooting laser out her eye out her left eye. It the was, volcano. Uh, yeah, Kano. For some weird reason, it, it to me there was something that just kind of looked shoddy in a way about the graphic for that. Yeah, I mean, it, it uh, might not be finished. Yeah, but, all right. I, 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 well, actually, it's coming out in April, right? I mean, so, dang, dude, we saw it should be finished. We saw Sonic completely redo a whole movie just based off of a fan's reaction to a trailer. That's true. So, but I don't know. I think I gotta keep this because I mean they've been they've been filming it. I think they filmed this movie a long time ago. Technically, got... uh, well, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I Are know that like Marvel directors, like the Russo brothers, have yeah. even said uh, trailers, the effects still aren't finished. Like literally, they were saying for Infinity War and Endgame, they didn't even finish the film until like a week before it came out, like effects <laughs> and everything. Yeah, because I mean, what uh, they have to—I think the film companies cut uh, like trailers and stuff, so it may not—it may not. They—they uh, they might not have like finished stuff yet because they have to send it to them and stuff. So who knows? Did, uh, did y'all see the? Um, because I think uh, all these Mortal Kombat movies started getting made when. Um, you know, friction started to gain from the YouTube series that was like fan made. Did you guys ever watch that? Because the effects in that were pretty good. Uh, I liked watching it, but it was mostly just like fighting scenes. Really, it wasn't like any type of story. Yeah, I, mean, I watched. I watched a few episodes of that. I thought it was. I thought it was really good. It was well made. Yeah, I, I ain't never seen it. The only the only Dragon Ball series I've ever seen on on YouTube was uh, uh, was a uh, Dragon Ball Z Bridge. That was it. But, <laughs> We're talking Dra about Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, I thought I said Dragon Ball Z for some reason. I, no, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I didn't see. I didn't see the Mortal Kombat either on there. I swear to God, yeah. I said Dragon Ball Z. Bro, I, you got yeah. us both there for a second. You said Dragon Ball. I was like, I hey, what? Oh, but um, have you guys have you guys seen the um the older movies that came out? Um, I saw the one that came out a few years ago, um, but I haven't seen anything else. Wait, you talking I mean, about the old, the old Mortal Kombat movie? Yeah, they have an old Mortal oh, Kombat movie. I, I think it came that, out in that. like, what, it came out in the 90s, right? Yeah, I haven't seen those. It's... Yeah, I mean, I, I like the, I like the original one. It was, it was really good. I haven't seen, I think they have one sequel. I didn't, I haven't seen that, but I mean, this like a, like I said, this new trailer as a as a fan, it's got me very excited. More more characters I, I I'm forgetting that I saw, but uh, Goro. I don't know if you guys know is the the forearm freak. Yeah. yeah so uh, he looked he looked pretty good in the trailer. So 
I'm I'm just excited for they for uh, stuff they do. Like I'm I'm sure they're gonna have like fatalities and stuff in there too. Yeah, I'm actually um I'm just excited to kind of get back to the movie theaters, man. Uh, I thought this Warner Brothers deal would be kind of crappy, uh, but technically they're all still going to theaters. So, uh, I mean, they I'm, said they were gonna go to theaters. Yeah, I mean, I just thought, you know, at the time I was like, well. I think they're trying to kill the theaters, but then I was like, well, they'll only be streaming for 30 days, but by 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 the end of the first day, you know, people who pirate movies and everything will have a good copy of it, just from it being on a digital file. Um, but even so, they've released a lot of good trailers already where, you know, I want to go see, like, um, you know, Godzilla vs. King Kong, yeah. um, Mortal Kombat, those are movies I want to go see in theaters, so I'm looking forward to uh, going back this year. Um, it's kind of funny because me and your brother was having a conversation um, the other day about new movies coming out. And I was like, you know, me, uh, as he mentioned something about uh, about Doctor Strange and the the multi the uh, the multiverse of madness. Yeah, the movie that's not coming out for like another year and a half. Yeah, I know, and I was like, you know what? It's great and everything. I would love to see it. My only, I mean, which I, I doubt Marvel would mess it up, but I had this fear that one of these days Marvel's going to mess up a movie so bad, like DC did with the Wonder Woman 1984. No, they play it. They play it too safe. Uh, Marvel, yeah. Marvel knows what they're doing. Like after Thor: The Dark World, uh, because technically, if you want to look at bad movies in the Marvel universe. Uh, I would even put Captain Marvel up there, but it's still a pretty safe movie. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, dude, dude, I, I, dude, I was sort of disappointed with with Wonder Woman eighty four. That was just, oh yeah, well yeah, it's a crap uh, show. Uh well, I mean, I wouldn't say it was a crap show, but I mean, they did, they, they, they had, did, they had, they had, like, they had well, good. Like casting. I said, I, I mean, I like, I like uh, Kristen Wiig and Pedro Pascal. They, I, I feel like they did great jobs in that movie. Um, I just feel like they kind of, well, maybe pacing wise. That movie yeah, was pacing, kinda... pacing sucked, but they also didn't do the story very well. Uh, like I said it before, you know, I could eat popcorn in a theater and watch Wonder Woman eighty four, but it's not a movie I would like to rewatch just because it's so jumbled. Uh, like literally the ending and spoiler alert because I'm gonna spoil it. Oh, um, right. yeah. But in the ending, Pedro Pascal's character. Literally uh, has like no repercussions for nearly ending the world. He just gets That's off true. like a helicopter, goes and hugs his son, and uh, they like go live happily ever after. After, and I'm like, what? I was like, this dude nearly just ended the entire planet. Hey man, he turned out to be a good guy at the end. So they were like, so and all, the, like he's fine. And the whole stone process of Wonder Woman, you know, bringing Steve back to life. Uh, through some other dude's body was just really weird. Like, what happens to that guy's soul during that time? The body that he's taking. That's, That's true. It's DC movies, man. That's or it's DC. Uh, the DC comics. I'm pretty sure you could probably find some something like that in the DC comics. That's much, much, much more com complex. But I, but I, but I feel me, like I think what did it to me though. With that movie was like the transition scene between like uh, um, whenever she's fighting a what's her, uh, she's fighting a what's her name um, Cheetah Cheetah yeah and there's like you know there's this like you know when her, when she's tearing off pieces of her armor yeah it's like this armor's been around I mean I, I assume that the the armor technically is supposed to be immortal or something like that or it's been around for Am I, am I right to say it, is, it, it, it was a part of her, correct? To, it was I, a part it, of her culture. She said it was belonging to, yeah. like, you know, yeah. like, like an ancient Amazonian warrior. Yeah, so. but then it just gets broken apart like, like it's not nothing. Too. But, I mean, to be fair, Cheetah did, like, um, wish to be just like uh, Wonder Woman. So, she, I mean, Wonder Woman's pretty strong, so... Yeah, I feel like she could probably give a part of her armor too. I uh, like I said, 
I blame Patty Jenkins for that failure because she came out with the, that report. She reported to the media. She's like, you know, uh, Warner Brothers didn't give me that much control over the first film, but in order to come back for the second film, I demanded, you know, like the entirety of the control. Like Wonder Woman eighty four is my film. Yeah. And uh, I, I wish she. I bet she wasn't. Uh, I bet she wasn't was now. Because they were talking about the big CGI fight at the end of Wonder Woman one. And yeah. uh, I'm like, we got a big CGI fight in Wonder Woman 84. Like, Cheetah doesn't look that great in CGI. But um, to, to me, and I feel like what, where Marvel won't uh, mess up is, like, as long as they have, like, you know, Kevin Feige, uh, you know, behind the reins there, and then Disney is not going to fold like Warner Brothers. They're going to, they're gonna like... This is our vision. You just have a directorial credit, you know what I'm saying? Like, because that's why, like, a lot of their uh, directors that were, you know, signed on to the to direct movies have left those movies because uh, they have the they have the creative differences with with Disney. But um, yeah, I, I feel like I feel like the Marvel movies are probably going to be very safe uh, coming up. Like it's. They're gonna be good, you know what I'm saying? Because I mean, WandaVision's good, but but they're not just gonna let somebody have control over a one character and go crazy with it. They, uh, you know, Marvel likes to take risks in their story, but it all it's always usually focused. And uh, I know uh, you put that in the chat, Rocha, but we are definitely not gonna have time to touch on that because uh. We've got uh, less than eight minutes, so if we want to, uh, for like a last final topic, we can go ahead and kind of transition to, uh, you know, talk about this really briefly. <laughs> and, uh... Bro, all right, fine, all right, fine, Arthur. I'll give you, I'll give you two minutes, Christian, to Christian, do it. touch it up on the touch on the theory. All right. So, very simple. Someone someone brought this up recently. So, all right. So, if you you what you even watch one of them, right? We watch we it. Watch one of but them. again, yeah, we all watch it. Me and ABG, we, we, we haven't seen episode seven. Episode. Is, that, is this what? what Wait, is, is, it, what, is it about to be episode seven? seven? The one, correct. Yeah, the newest one. No, okay, so it doesn't, involve, it doesn't involve episode seven. Good. Okay, perfect. All right, go, so, go, go ahead. So, you got, you got like a minute and a half now. So, Fan theory so far that the fan theory has, has come out right now that that uh, that Ultron is not dead. That Ultron is actually behind the scenes right now manipulating both uh, uh, Hay Hay Hayer that is, that's what's name the and uh and that he's got a backup that he that he supposedly might have a backup file or something like that like stored inside of uh and stored inside of uh, uh Vision. Okay, um, right. and and it has and, the, and someone brought it up. It has something to do with like you know how you know how like the uh, uh, how Ultron was represented as uh, having red color. Well, wait, was that right? Was it red color? Yeah, I mean he had red, but at the same time, I mean literally, Vision was what? dead the entire like in-game film. I think he's dead, but oh, is I mean, I, I get what you're saying. I, I I mean, listen, I would be extremely excited to have Ultron back. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, mostly just because of James Spader, but... Well, what's surprising? Uh, Actually, it really was surprising if he did come back, though. Because, I mean, yeah. in the comics, he's come, he's come back before. Oh, yeah. People like people talk about talk bad about uh, Age of Ultron, but I, I rewatched that recently. and it, I mean, it, was, it wasn't that bad. It was, it was pretty good. Well, just technically, as far as from, like, an AI standpoint, uh, you know, Vision couldn't really kill Ultron the way he did in the movie. Like, technically, Ultron would still be around, like, on the technological grid, you know? But, uh, that's the only, like, big hole I had with it at the end. Like, I mean, I agree, Ultron could still be very much alive, you know? Yeah, I mean... Shoot. That's a, that's a theory, but... Thank you for giving us this time to talk about it, dear. Uh, yeah, no problem, no problem. Yes. Uh, I just know now, nobody needs to go on a tangent with this, so I'm just going to keep it very simple. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, it's been in the news for over a week or two now, but we somehow have not brought it up on our show yet. Uh, Gorilla Hair Glue Girl. So Gorilla Hair Glue. Girl. Yes. Gorilla Glue Girl. <laughs> Gorilla Glue. Yeah. Um, you know, I see a lot of things that she was considering suing Gorilla Glue for, like, putting the product in her hair. Um... And obviously everybody knows what happened on TikTok. It went viral. She ended up in the ER. Uh, I think she had to get a lot of her hair cut off. Um, tell me this real quick, each of you. Um, is she a victim in this situation or just showcased pure like stupidity in the moment? Um, yeah, I mean, it's her fault. You know, I mean... Nobody, it's Gorilla Glue. Nobody, everybody knows what Gorilla Glue is. I mean, it's a it's very strong glue. Like, is why it's called Gorilla Glue because it's, I mean, it's a grip. You know what I'm saying? Like, a gorilla is crazy. But, like, you know, I mean, I don't blame her for the mistake, even though it is her mistake. It's her, it's her fault. Like, I mean, nobody else is to blame for this. But, like, I don't know. I still feel sorry for her. I feel sorry for her, but I i mean, I agree. Oh. I think it could be a mistake that's easily made because, like, technically if I've stayed at my grandparents' house before, uh, I've mistaken, like, my pappy's dental cream for toothpaste. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, I mean, I get, I get the mistake, but technically I don't get the, uh, like, the potential lawsuit because it's totally her fault. What about you, Christian? What, what about, yeah, Christian? So, I'm not a... So I'm not a, obviously I'm not a professional in tort law, but uh, I would assume that in this situation, the uh, the claimant, you know, being you know like really hair glue girl, and like the defendant being uh, being the company, yeah, uh, I would assume I would assume that there would probably be an argument uh, where I would assume there'd be an argument saying that you know from really glue that. Um, there's an um, pl- there's an implied. Uh, uh, well, they have a warning a label that says don't put on skin or bodily fluids. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I was gonna say like they probably definitely yeah, no, but, uh, say that on their label. Like, so I mean, like, it would it would be an easy case for them in court. Yeah. Like I mean, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm saying like I, I assume that their argument would be that there's like an a, there's an implied understanding that you know based on the warning label that. If you don't put on your on your body, on your hair, your in your mouth, man. I mean, not your hair, but like on your skin, your eyes, your mouth. Then that would also should apply to your hair. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, another big thing: you don't even buy Gorilla Glue in the hair product section. So, I mean, case closed, right? <laughs> and um, as we uh, start to wind down the episode, uh, Jared, do you have any closing thoughts for the people? Uh, no, not really. Um, you know, I would say that after the final story that we covered this week, uh, you know, don't put glue in your hair. Hope everybody in Texas and everywhere else that's been highly affected by the storms is being safe. Um, because, you know, uh, storms aren't no joke. And I've, uh, you know, I've been in a state before that doesn't prepare for it. So I understand how everybody down there is, you know, hurting and uh, wants this whole thing to be over with. But, you know, just uh, keep pushing on through and stay safe. And, uh, you know, as the saying goes, this too shall pass. All right. And for me, you know, definitely don't put glue in your hair or at least, if you do suffer in silence and don't put it on the internet because people are going to make a meme out of you, they're going to laugh at you. Uh, and second, yeah, people holding it down in Texas, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much just bouncing off of your closing thoughts, but uh, people holding it down in Texas. I got a friend who uh, moved to Texas for work, and he has definitely not been enjoying himself during this <laughs> storm because, I mean, he he he's from Georgia, so he's he's in a different place, and he's uh, you know, just trying to just trying to survive like everybody else. So, 
Um, and third, I mean, you know, of course, wear a mask. And uh, yeah, what about you, Christian? You got anything? You got anything left for the people? Um, safe, safe out there, I guess. Um, uh, if y'all if y'all got a switch, add me on the switch. Yeah, hey. y'all want to hear my yeah? You think they want to hear my friend go? You're right, dude. Like, yeah, do it. All right, S W zero six two eight fifty eight ninety sixty two zero six. Hey, yeah. Add me on there. We'll play some games. Christian, I'm not gonna lie. You sound like a uh, like an old like a trucker on the like CB radios, like <clears throat> trying to page for somebody, like looking for somebody. Like this is Smoky Bear. I'm just chilling, trying to find a a little yeah. bunny to to play around with. Ah, uh, you know, I couldn't go that far. Bro, I, you know, I don't know why it happened like that because you know my audio never sounds good over the phone or over webcam, and I I, I never get that. I mean, you sound you sound like regular Christian right now. So, Burger Burger, my code is uh twenty eight forty six. 57 S02. You can find me on the Switch. Just search me up right now. Hey. That's true. That's hey, exactly how he sounded. You're going to be a trucker. You won't tell you're a trucker. You might as well go ahead and bring me my PlayStation 5. Yeah, true. You can go rob the FedEx truck that has his PlayStation 5 currently yeah. and <laughs> send it to him. Yeah, I'm but, not making um, a trip to Texas anytime soon. <laughs> oh, but, I guess we can uh, shut up the Logan Rush, too. Christian, you got you got any you got any other socials you want to plug or anything? The Green Game. Uh, if, if y'all don't know who the Green Game is, but I promise you, anyone who who knows who the re who re kid is and narrator, they'll know yeah. what I'm talking about. All right. And uh, Jerry, what about you, bro? As you all know, you can find me uh, on Twitter now at Jared Evans, just my name. Uh, God, I was doing pretty good for a while, you know, sending updates from time to time, but I don't think I've put anything out in a while. Uh, life's been busy, so not much time for social media. But that's a, that's all the uh, plugs for me. And uh, me, of course, you can find me on Twitter at Young without the O underscore ABG, and you can find us as a collective on Twitter at unheard underscore of pod that's going to be the same on instagram uh unheard underscore of pod and on facebook search us up you probably have already seen us i mean hey we do have fan sites <laughs> but uh or at least uh fan accounts but but um yeah facebook search us up youtube follow the link you know we out here we out here it's not hard of that's true. And uh, once again, you know, Christian, we want to thank you for joining us. Uh, it was nice to have you on. And I'm sure we'll uh, we'll bring you back. You know, don't study too hard out there in law school. And, uh, you know, he's uh, he's got his papers. He's got his big old law book. <laughs> Sheesh. Hey. I hate to see it. That's okay. The, oh, the, the reward will outweigh... All of this works, you know, in the long run. True. Bro, I I have, in one of my classes, I have uh, like a 10-page paper due at the end of the semester. And in uh, another, class, in another class, I only have one grade, one final. Like, uh, just like last semester. And if I fail it, I fail it. You said 10-page paper? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just a, that's just a, that's a small one, too. That's I was about to say that's small, dude. I've I've got a master's degree. Like a normal paper for me was like fifteen to twenty three pages. Oh yeah, I know. That's, so, yeah, trust me, it's stressful. You know it. You know how I feel, dude. Well, uh, our degrees are different. Yours is probably more. Uh, you know, you've probably yeah, got right. a lot more work than I had, but. My, you, you know, you, what, what's your thing? I forgot, Jared. Uh, my master's is in strategic communications. All right, so. So yours was probably more along the lines of like, you know, like actually, you know, writing papers, but like that was more focused on towards getting experience in communications. Law in of itself is more of a theory construct. 
you have you you spend so much time focusing on like principles and understanding of like what those principles are like like statutory language uh, i'm in a class right now administrative law that focuses only on like like understanding how administrations work yeah and exactly uh and uh, mine was more so of like a leadership practice uh, to kind of help me get managerial roles. But at the hey, end of bro, the day... I'm like, I'm like Kanye, bro. I'm a college dropout. Uh-huh. I, I, hey, I, speaking of Kanye, last second news. Apparently uh, cool. Kim and Kanye have filed for divorce. Oh, so, good for them. Is, gonna, is this going to be a Christian after this? Who knows? Probably. I know this kind of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> um... Yeah, but that was just the last little tidbit, and uh, of course, we love having our guests on. I'm sure we'll get you back on here, Christian. It was good to have you, and uh, as always, we love you, we hear you, and we hope you hear us here at Unheard Of. And as always, I'm Arthur. And I'm Jared, and you just listened to Unheard Of.